come to Ukraine for round number nine of the Arkansas DuPont Cup Series season number 10. After a very emotion, after a very, very interesting and a somewhat emotional weekend last week at Auto Club for the 200th ever DuPont Cup Series race, we come to Ukraine with a huge amount of controversy. As everybody knows, Jessica Shelt Deanna Shelton, my apologies, was injured at Island Rally about two weeks ago. In her absence, Joshua Collar took over and Finn Guy took over the suspended Jonathan Skavnicki. Well, news has just come out today that Retro Racing Enterprises is, is suing Red Bull Racing for 100k, for 100k, $100,000 for uh, many reasons. Uh, apparently stated for, well, without going to legal terms, they basically said that for the damaged car, for injuring the driver, and just for, you know, any other crime that you can think of, Red Bull has not s issued a statement about this at all. And uh, definitely, definitely one of the first times the DuPont Cup Series has ever been involved in a suing. Arkansas has not commented either. Neither has the DuPont stewards about this. So a lot of mystery over this fine for the moment. But we got to head to the green flag. Daniel Day managed to just grab the pole for, tonight, for today's race here at Ukraine. And let us take us to the green. Coming to the green flag, Demax Daniel Day side by side. Green flag in the air here, Ukraine. Into the first two turns of the racetrack. Not a very long straightaway coming to the flag. It's Demax Daniel Day side by side for the lead. You're looking at two of the best road course racers in Arkansas. Max has the uh, second most wins on road courses. Daniel Day has always been a threat on them. And then hanging third is DeMax's teammate, Sean Paul, our third. Who's already got two wins this season. DeMax has got one win. Daniel Day is winless. Into that long, winding turn. DeMax Day side by side here. And DeMax clears the 71 quite easily. And Pollard now challenging for second against the 71. Good start by DeMax. He will take the lead. This is the battle for second between Pollard and Day. Side by side, DeMax starting to scoot away. It's Richard Johnson, Noah Hart right behind him. And Day and Pollard side by side for second here. Two very similar looking cars for the most part. Volkswagen versus Audi, two German cars. And Day, Pollard side by side. Neither of these two can really find an edge against each other, but Daniel Day keeps second as Pollard backed off. He had no choice. Would have wrecked Day if it had been other, any other way here. There's no hard approaches. Pollard and Jacob Hart going out a one on one for seventh here. Blocking eighth. Jacob Hart in seventh as he's going for underneath the, the number 99 here. Jacob Hart into this long winding turn, which leads into the final straightaway, and Block does clear the 99, and Michael Block definitely is gonna need this run if he can hang on to it. Tross there, Seth Cole also there as well. Kenny Myatt, and then Noah Har as Block is charging his way through the field right now, fighting everybody he can. It's a really good battle so far. Pollard challenging Day again for second place, but Daniel Day is so strong on the exit of the turn that Pollard just cannot get by him here as Pollard swings away wide. Probably looking for a Daniel Day type momentum, but he's not getting it. And Day scooted away from Pollard pretty easily right there. But uh, we know how Pollard's, not, he, Pollard's been a fighter this year, so I don't think it's about between them's over just Points yet. Points here, Dylan Young and his teammate Seth Cole having a really rough battle inside the top 10 here, as these guys have just been side by side, beating and banging all over each other ever since the start of this race, and has not let up at all. Dylan Young, first in the points, trying to scoot away from Cole Daly, who is in the back of the field. Also, Daniel Day also up there. He's trying to close in on the points of Dylan Young as well. But Dylan Young, probably one of his best seasons so far in this ninth round of the season. As we are coming close to the halfway point of this race and this year's season. Here's a battle that's been really getting intense 
for 26th position of all things. This is for three wide into the final turn. This has not happened yet this weekend. Oh boy, ooh, contact 1766. Jackson's trying to clear both Team Discover cars. And he clears both of them. He took two Team Discover cars out of the equation just like that. And that was a fantastic move by Charles Jackson. Jackson sits eighth. In, Jackson is sitting eighth in the points, and he is giving one heck of an effort right now, pushing his way through the field after a bad qualifying start. Richard Johnson has been doing a fantastic job holding his own in fourth position right now. This is Richard, this is the highest Richard Johnson has been all season long. He had a rough start, flipped in the duels and missed a tile you finder because of it, and now he is uh, finally getting a good run for the first time at all this year. Uh, Richard Johnson is actually known to be one of the best adapters, meaning that he usually adapts to tracks a lot quicker than others, and since none of us have ever been here before, yeah, he's doing quite a good job. In this 20 car, and with a couple of new tracks also coming up later this season, Richard Johnson's going to want to really capitalize on those. Fibros has started in 22nd. He's fought his way up into 11th and is now fighting for a spot in the top 10 against Seth Cole and Jacob Hart. Fibrosis has also been on the move. He is the fastest car on the racetrack right now as he is fighting his way through all this lap traffic. And Fibrosis is also one of the better road course racers in the series. He won at Royal Atlanta last year. And with Royal Atlanta coming up in a couple of weeks, we'll see how he does there. But uh, he's having a good fight with Jacob Hart here, but I think he will clear him. And he does. Fibrosis does clear the 99 for now. Battle for 18th between Eric Byrne and Sean Galligan, two of the Harpool Motorsports cars. Eric Byrne, one of the uh, premier road course drivers in DuPont Cup Series. He won the first ever road course race in DuPont as he is being aggressive with Sean Galligan as he pushes him off the racetrack right there. I don't think Galligan's going to appreciate that as he cuts to the inside with a bit of a uh, crossover maneuver. Does not get it as pit stops have begun here in Ukraine. And side by side, still going off. Galligan and Burner are having a really good battle right here. And man, and you can see two more teammates behind. And Lamas and PJ Williams also fighting. I believe they are fighting for 19th or 18th or something like that. But these two are not letting off each other. 44, 55. Both these two have been winless this year. And looks like Galligan tries to clear the 55, and he does clear him a little bit, but this battle is far Oh boy, harder. some bit of a dream match, I'd say, between Kenny Myatt and Michael Block. You're looking at the oldest DuPont Cup Series driver and the oldest Elite Series driver going at a one-on-one. -on -one. Michael Block has never driven the Elite Series, and if Kenny Myatt wants an Elite Series, wants someone to be in the Elite Series, I'd definitely say that this number 29 is showing that he's capable of being in it. As Block passes by, the Elite Series is grace of all-time driver Kenny Myatt, or at least the road course best all-time Kenny Myatt. Talk about a bit of a show, Kenny Myatt's pit crew just dropped Myatt from 9th all the way down to 38th. That is, that is not the first time either. Kenny Myatt's pit crew has just been god-awful this year, outside of Arkansas. They almost cost him the win at Arkansas. They rebounded and got him back into the first position, but this whole year, Maya has just not had any luck on pit road. But uh, Maya is going to have a lot of work to do if he wants to get back into the top 20. He still has time in another pit stop where hopefully his pit crew won't mess it up. Pit stops Man. weren't so kind to Hopper Motorsports. All three of their cars and all three of their pit crews just pulled off some of the slowest pit stops I've ever seen in my entire life. It's, all three of the Hoffman Morse cars are in the bottom five of the field right now. I'll tell you what, this pit, pit crews have been so important this year as we've had a lot of inconsistency in pit crews. It's been quite interesting to watch, but you're definitely not safe anymore just running consistent and you, you need a good pit crew first, man. Heartbreak for Hoffman Morse Sports, but uh, hard is caught crew. day for second after pit stops here. These two fought the start. Dave pulled away, but here comes Pollard underneath the inside of the 71. And he easily cleared that 71, coming off that turn onto straightaway. DeMax lost time on pit road. And Pollard is charging forward to his teammates. Texan Audi is one and two. 
the chase is on as Pard is running down the 92. He is closed in. Look how quick he's closing in that 81 car. Whatever they did to that car, it has surely worked. And look at the run the 81 gets on the inside. Dimax cut him off right there, but that was pretty necessary considering his own teammate is about to vandalize him here. And Pollard just got so much speed on the straightaways right now that Dimax can't even handle it. Oh man, this 81 team. Whatever they do to their cars, it's working here as Pollard to the inside. He takes the lead and he scoots away really easily and he makes a gap out of Demax in one single turn. And Pollard takes the lead. And I'm afraid if Demax is gonna wanna win this race, it's gonna have to be on pit stops as we have final pit stops incoming soon. And oh man, that's it. that 81 car is really fast right now but it is not handling well at all. We're, we're hearing that contact was made for the first pit stops here and oh man, oh God, oh. Vincent Allen turned the number 10 of Jacob Anthony. Dylan Young runs in fifth right now, still with the points lead. And so far, as close as, that, as close as adversary, which I which I think is Cody Lamas, he's all the way in the back for now. He's not really near the front. As final pit stops commence here, Cole Daly and Daniel Day, two other guys who are near the title, Noah Hart as well. They're trying to beat this number two car, and we'll see if they do that after the final pit stop. It's gone from a five second lead to a seven second lead as Pollard still holds the lead in the number 81 car after pit stops. This 81 team is unstoppable. He still is the fastest car on the racetrack. And this 81 team, man, they have really pulled something together this year, and especially Potter himself as well. This is the strongest we've ever seen Tex and Audi. They ran well with Demax in his last few seasons, but it never really became very obvious until Pollard started getting top tens off the bat every week. And with a few laps to go, unless something happens, Pollard's got this race won. Jake Baskin is the highest Red Bull in the field right now, currently running in 16th, bound for 15th with Charles Jackson, who started in 30, 41st and worked his way all the way up into the top 15. Baskin's team took two tires in a hope that they would get better track position. So they basically went from 31st to into 12th, and they've been dropping ever since. But it, honestly, it's probably worth the gamble as it's working with only, a f with only about three laps to go. Richard Johnson said called battling for the podium spot. Daniel Day lost a ton of track position on those pit stops, so now it is between these two for the uh, final podium position here. Texan Alley still runs 1-2. And Richard Johnson, Seth Cole, two guys, they go a long way back. And I expect these guys are going to treat each other pretty nicely. But we'll see here. But Seth Cole's got the faster car. He actually is running laps compare. He actually is running laps that could be comparable to Pollard's, but Pollard is still going away for the moment here as we are coming to two laps to go at the line. And Richard Johnson and Toyota trying to get their highest finish of the trying to get their highest finisher at podium. Three car battle for 12th between Block, Mason, Alex Allen here. Very cool battle going on between these three. Long-time Arkansas drivers, Nick Mace is heading into his retirement race in the Elite Series in just a few days. And Block also up there. Alex Allen going to be racing the Elite Series finale. So it's going to be quite interesting to see as these three continue to fight one-on-one -on -one here as we come to the white flag. Charlie Fibrosis is heading into the Elite Series title this weekend, tied with Ian Duda for the Elite Series championship. He's currently running in 11th right now. But this is good practice for him. He's never, he's been so nervous this weekend about that race. So is Duda. Duda hasn't been a factor all day today, which could be a good sign for fibrosis here as we hit the white flag. Meanwhile, Stephen Paul the third, seven seconds ahead of Eugene Max, his own teammate. Texan out, he's gonna go one, two here. What a year it's been for Pollard. In less than 10 races, he's going to score his third win. Three wins in nine races. That's one-third. 
of the entire season so far. What a drive by this team this year. They have been unstoppable. South Korea is next week. Pari must be excited. Texan Iron is going to bring everything they can to that into the final turn. Steven Pari at third will score his third win of season number 10 here at Ukraine in a very, very big win for this team. And Texan Audi scores their fourth win of the year.